In a Formula 1 season, everyone was tipping to be a massive development race with all new rules. Ferrari is leading both championships without upgrading its car at all. The F175 has won two of the first four races despite pretty much existing in its launch specification, give or take some circuit-specific downforce configurations. Rival Red Bull has already introduced one big upgrade during testing and it has started a big weight-saving exercise as well. So the pressure is on Ferrari to respond at some point, but it's sticking to its original plan for now. Parallel works in weight saving, aerodynamic development and mechanical improvements have been underway for some time, but Ferrari has been playing the long game. Although it made some minor changes to the car during testing, including to the floor, it didn't introduce new parts once the season began beyond a lower downforce rear wing for the demands of the Jeddah circuit in Saudi Arabia. It brought its first update of the season to the third round in Australia, trialling a modified diffuser on Charles Leclerc's car during Friday practice, but it didn't race it. Ferrari added a packer to the diffuser run by Leclerc on Friday in Australia, but it was removed for Saturday. This packer changed the shape of the floor. It was an experiment designed to evaluate the effect on airflow, either to trial a future change without committing to manufacturing a completely new floor, or to gather data on the revised shape to inform future development. It will have been invaluable in checking the correlation to the wind tunnel to either validate an update that's already designed or indicate what needs to be changed to ensure it's viable. But whatever Ferrari was doing, it was not revealed at Imola. This is partly because of the schedule for that weekend, with just one free practice session ahead of Friday's qualifying because it was the first sprint event of the season. The investments will bear fruit eventually, although even the next race in Miami will come too soon. Team principal Mattia Bonotto says Ferrari's main upgrade will not be in the United States, but there will be new parts, although it sounds like these will once again be tailored to the circuit itself. The new track around the Hard Rock Stadium is a high-speed circuit, and Ferrari expects different downforce demands to what have been required so far this season. It also sounds like there could be further revisions to help improve the porpoising that is costing Ferrari some performance too. But in terms of a big step, perhaps some changes to the floor or diffuser, Ferrari intends to wait until the Spanish Grand Prix at the earliest for its main upgrades. Before we get on to explaining a bit more about Ferrari's approach, we just wanted to thank everybody who has subscribed to our channel so far. Your support means a lot to us, and if you're not yet part of our team, feel free to hit that button at any time to join us for the ride. Ferrari's early advantage in 2022 meant a gamble it took was paying off. F1's budget cap has upped the stakes when it comes to big teams getting their development choices right. A dominant narrative over the last few months has been the increasing restrictions on spending, wind tunnel time and CFD work which have put a premium on efficiency. With that in mind, Ferrari opted against a significant early upgrade of its 2022 car, whereas chief rivals Red Bull and Mercedes introduced big evolutions during testing. Despite plenty of rivals disguising developments at their launches and predictions of a flurry of upgrades early in the year, the F175 has remained largely unchanged from when it first ran on track in a pre-season shakedown. Even as early as the season opener in Bahrain, this was being touted by Ferrari's drivers as a major advantage because it meant the team had spent two weeks of testing and the time in between focused on understanding and improving a consistent package without introducing major new variables. Then Ferrari won two of the first three Grand Prix and built a strong lead in both championships, having taken the risk of backing its base specification of the F175 to be good enough to do a good job early on while it validated its development path. That is a luxury its rivals could not afford. Ferrari put more attention on this car than 2021 title contenders Red Bull and Mercedes, aided by the sliding scale on which aerodynamic testing restrictions have been applied since the start of last year. The lower a team finishes in the championship, the more wind tunnel time and CFD work they get. Ferrari finished sixth in its miserable 2020 season, so last year it was allowed to do more development work than Mercedes and Red Bull. Yes, Ferrari did not have the distraction of a championship fight last year, but more importantly, it had extra resources available. 
As Ferrari was able to do more work last year, it probably had a more mature 2022 concept by the end of 2021. This is almost certainly a factor in why it could afford to be patient in introducing major upgrades. Its launch car was perhaps weeks worth of development ahead of the cars that Red Bull and Mercedes only had for the second test in Bahrain. So Ferrari was able to plan how to use its 2022 development allowances around having a neatly refined car design that it could be confident starting the season with. This was a big opportunity and one that Ferrari clearly grasped with a very sweet design in the F175. The key challenge will be maximising whatever scope there is to develop the car from here so that its early advantage is not eradicated. Ferrari's early form has been down to a big step on the engine side as well as having a good car. It has an up and down record since the V6 turbo hybrid era began in 2014, having started well behind Mercedes before catching and surpassing it by 2019. But this was via much scrutinised methods and the FIA had concerns about the legality of that year's Ferrari power unit. In response, the FIA issued various technical directives to clamp down on illegitimate engine techniques and Ferrari's performance sharply declined as a consequence. Ferrari has worked to eliminate that deficit over the past two years and its 2022 power unit is considered by many in F1 to be the new benchmark. There were signs of where the new Ferrari engine is strongest as early as the first race when Leclerc had a fierce fight with the Honda-powered Red Bull of Max Verstappen in Bahrain. There were noticeably different performance characteristics in terms of power deployment and straight line speed. The Ferrari gives good drivability and so has generally been slightly faster out of corners. It also seems to have different gearing, usually shorter, which means quicker upshifts, especially in the early gears and even holding the car in a higher gear through certain corners. That and the different energy deployment characteristics of the power units has made the Ferrari particularly strong out of slow corners, giving it an advantage until it runs out of power towards the end of the straights where the Red Bull tends to be a bit faster. Ferrari's progress with its engine has been vital as the designs are being homologated this year until the end of 2025. The internal combustion engine has already been frozen in specification while the energy recovery systems will be homologated later in the year. Ferrari's internal combustion engine has undergone major revisions this year, even though it shunned the split turbo compressor architecture that is now used by all three other manufacturers. It has started the season with essentially the same hybrid system it introduced in the second half of 2021. But an update is expected this year prior to the homologation date, with some speculation it could be introduced as part of a switch to a fresh power unit in Miami or Spain. There have also been reports that Ferrari has actually unleashed more power from its engine already, having run in slightly more conservative engine modes while validating its reliability. Another suggestion is that Ferrari will increase the power output even more when it switches to the second engine, which Carlos Sainz has already done and Leclerc will do soon. Binotto has denied that Ferrari's power output has changed, but engine manufacturers always find gains the more they run and optimise their designs, so perhaps there's a middle ground between the speculation and the official line. All that really matters is Ferrari's engine has played a very important role in its strong start to the season. Rivals reckon it might be the class leading power unit. If that's the case, Ferrari needs to make sure its developments on the chassis side give it a car to match.